you looking for an easy and delicious appetizer to start your meal? Then give this restaurant quality Greek salad a try. Plus, I'll show you a quick method for pickling the onions to enhance the dish's flavor. Unless you're a fan of raw onions, one way to make the flavor more interesting is to pickle the vegetables. The process only takes 15 minutes and makes a huge flavor impact. Cut off both ends of a red onion. Make sure to leave the root end intact so it doesn't fall apart when you cut it. Make a shallow cut and then pull off the first layer so you can peel off the skin. Make a small cut down the side and then place that on the cutting board. This way, the onion's not gonna roll around. Cut into eighth inch thick slices. When you pull the layers apart, you're going to have these nice circles. We need a half cup. The pickling solution is just two ingredients. In a small bowl, I'm going to add a quarter cup of red wine vinegar and two tablespoons of honey. You could also use granulated sugar or pure maple syrup. If you prefer a more tangy flavor, you can omit the sweetener. However, I like the balance of flavors. Add in a half a cup of the sliced onions. Do your best to submerge as many of the rings under the liquid as possible. As the vegetables marinate, the sulfurous compounds are going to mellow out due to the acids in the vinegar. I let this sit for about 15 minutes and I'll check in about halfway through and just stir it so that all of the slices have contact with the liquid. I have these beautiful crisp romaine hearts. I'm going to clean them before cutting. Rinse the lettuce under cool running water. Shake to remove excess water and dry with clean towels. I've washed and dried the lettuce to remove any dirt or contamination from the surface and between the leaves. Find the largest leaf and have that facing up. Cut into strips lengthwise, three quarter inch thick. Then turn over and cut three quarter inch strips again. Now cut into three quarter inch thick pieces. I like the crispiness of this lighter colored bottom end, so make sure you keep that in too. We need eight cups for this recipe. I've got a classic combination of mix-ins that I'm going to prepare that's gonna add a nice contrast of flavors and textures, but the salad's really easy to customize if you wanna switch things up. I have an English cucumber. The skin is really thin, so you don't have to peel it. Slice off the ends, then cut into four pieces. Slice the cucumber in half lengthwise, and then cut into quarters. Turn and line them up. Slice into quarter inch thick pieces. The seeds are small, so you don't have to scoop them out. We need one cup. Grab some ripe, juicy tomatoes. These are vine ripened. So I'm gonna take them off the stem. You can use your favorite tomatoes like Roma or Campari, whatever's in season. Slice them in half lengthwise. Then cut into half inch thick wedges. This is gonna add a nice sweet juiciness to the salad. We need one cup. To cut the bell pepper, trim off both ends. Cut in half lengthwise. Then carefully remove the inside of the pepper and the seeds. This is gonna add a nice sweet and mild peppery taste without the heat. Cut into three quarter inch thick strips. If you don't like bell peppers, you can also use pepperoncinis. Line them up and cut into three quarter inch dice. We need three quarter cup. You can't have a Greek salad without some tangy and creamy feta cheese. Cut these into little cubes, about a quarter inch thick. That way they don't completely fall apart when we're mixing. Turn and cut into a quarter inch thick cubes. I love the briny flavor of the cheese. You need four ounces. To build the salad, I have the eight cups of lettuce. Add one cup of the diced English cucumber, one cup of the tomato wedges, three quarter cups of bell pepper. Add a half a cup of the drained pickled onions. Add a half a cup of pitted Kalamata olives and four ounces of the cubed feta cheese. 
I'm going to save a few cubes to use as garnish for later. Now set this aside. To make the dressing, I'm going to start by zesting a lemon. The skin has these aromatic citrus oils that are fat soluble. So when you add them to the dressing, it's going to dissolve in the olive oil and add a lot of dimension. Oh, it smells really good already. We need one teaspoon. To juice the lemon, cut it in half, place it inside of the juicer, and give it a good squeeze. It's going to add a nice bright acidity to the vinaigrette. We need one tablespoon. To add an earthy bite to the dressing, mince some fresh garlic. Cut off each end, give the clove a smash. This makes it easy to remove the skin. Use the fanning motion to mince into really small pieces. Wait to mince the garlic because the sulfurous allicin compounds in the ingredient is going to build as it's being cut down. So the longer it sits, the stronger the flavor will be. And we don't want it to be overpowering. We need two teaspoons. In a medium bowl, add three tablespoons of red wine vinegar one teaspoon of lemon zest, one tablespoon of lemon juice, one teaspoon of Dijon mustard, one teaspoon of honey. The honey and mustard are both light emulsifiers, so they're going to help the dressing stay suspended for longer. Two teaspoons of minced garlic, a half a teaspoon of dried oregano, it's gonna add a nice herbaceous note, a half teaspoon of kosher salt, and a quarter teaspoon of black pepper. Just squish this till everything is combined. To make a properly emulsified dressing, you're going to slowly add a half a cup of extra virgin olive oil while continuously whisking. Take your time with this process. You want the oil to form small droplets so it's suspended in the liquid and over time will create a thickened consistency. We want the dressing to cling to all of the ingredients. If you add the oil all in at one time, it's just going to coalesce together and create an oily layer on top. This oil and vinegar dressing is a semi-permanent mixture, which means it's not going to stay emulsified indefinitely. So make sure if you don't dress the salad right away, whisk it up before you add it on top. This looks good. It's clinging to the whisk, which means it's gonna grab onto the ingredients. Drizzle on about half of the dressing. I like to serve the rest on the side for guests to add on later. Gently toss to combine. If any of the heavier ingredients start to settle, just bring them back to the top. You're looking for an even coating on the leaves and also on the mix-in ingredients. You don't want the cheese to break down too much, just a little bit. Wow, this looks really good. Right before serving, I like to add a little bit more cheese on top, then sprinkle with a little bit of extra dried oregano. To make this a complete meal, I would serve the salad with this roasted chicken recipe right here. It makes for a healthy pairing. I hope you enjoyed learning the science behind Greek salad, and if you did, please give it a big thumbs up. It means a lot when you do. See you in the next video. Mm, maybe a little bit more cheese. <laughs>